I would like to call this into order. This is a regular session of Ruth Towns Board of Education held for the purpose of conducting appropriate board business in compliance with Chapter 231 laws of 1975. Notice that this meeting was advertised in the Morris County Daily Record. Copies of the agenda of this meeting are appropriately posted to available to the public. Mr. Bora? Mr. Brandner? Here. Mr. Cabana? Here. Mr. Chen? Here. Mr. Eaton? Mrs. Hervey? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. LeVar? Here. Mr. McBride? Here. Also present, Dr. Angelo, Superintendent Principal. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on our agenda are four business motions. One, two, three. Any motion, please? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or discussion? If not, the question is on the adoption of four business motions. One, two, three. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no. All those stay. I abstain from number one and I preserve it. I agree with that. I abstain from number one and only. Yeah. You're not agreeing. Yeah. Thank you. That brings us to the Business Administrator Board Secretary's Report, Mr. Murphy. Okay, just a couple of items. Uh, as I reported at a previous meeting, the auditors uh, came in on Monday to do their field work. They'll be here all week, and then full the fun begins after they leave when they start gathering the testing data and uh, the back and forth and interaction between the board, uh, the board office and the auditors. Uh, we only anticipate any issues. Uh, the roof project, we met with the uh, Facilities Committee. The uh, roof project started on July 14th when the lower gym roof went along uh, at a rapid pace very quickly. And then when they got to the area that is over the main entrance uh, and they started demolition, they found some issues with the underlying uh, roof deck, which uh, they had to stop the project and redesign uh, based on uh, insul a new type of tape or insulation that was needed that wasn't needed for all the service. <coughs> excuse me, surveys. So it was in very poor condition. So you'll see on the agenda there is a change order that we discussed with the committee. Um, the project was delayed about two to three weeks while they're manufacturing all this and it's requiring um, the additional materials and the additional work. However, the, uh, the contractor has been excellent in working with us to make sure there's no disruption. And they also were able to absorb uh, a number of the labor costs too, knowing that we're a small district and we have, uh, we have a tight budget. So they've been working with us in the next And the summer cleaning and the supply delivery, the uh, building the grounds uh, department has done an excellent job winding down with the cleaning. All the materials have been delivered to the classes. Teachers have been coming and going, checking in the supplies, looking for missing items, looking for damaged items. So we're working with that. And the facility uh, should be ready for the opening of school in September. That's all I have. Thank you. That brings us to the superintendent's report, Dr. Angelo. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of things to echo what Mr. Murray said. I'm very proud of the job that everyone's been doing here over the summer in preparation for the start of the school year. We're ready to begin. We're excited to get our students and staff back in the building soon. The last week or so, we've had many staff members that have been in and out preparing their classrooms. It's been great to catch up with them and see them. And we're looking forward to things in September. Mike Featherman and I from Mountain Lakes uh, have been in touch this summer and we're working to schedule quarterly articulation meetings for the new school year. And he and I have already scheduled time to meet in mid-September uh, together, so I'll keep you posted and updated as things materialize. On August 30th, we're hosting a workshop here at RBS that I've coordinated with Chief Ketchabade uh, with the Boone Township Police to discuss best practices for school safety procedures and school threat assessment and management. So we'll be joined by actually all of the officers from the Boone Township Police Department, along with representatives from the Morris County Sheriff's Department and other officers from surrounding municipalities too. So I'm looking forward to the program. I'm grateful to be able to partner, obviously, with our local PD, along with these other various entities to uh, ensure our commitment to creating the safest possible environment for our kids and our staff members here. Um, really, the last thing is just a plug. We're looking for substitute teachers and bus drivers. 
So if you know anyone, pass along the information that's out there on our website. and adding it to the market uh, for in need of subs and substitute bus drivers. I quit the board and I'll do one of those. That is for me, along with your representatives from the PD. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, you will have a chance to look at the attendance report. There's this reporting, and that brings us to commendations. Dr. Rachel Bolo. Commendations. A thank you to our service squad and the student council for their annual springtime cleanup of the grounds on and around our campus. A thank you to our indefatigable, it's an SAT word, 12 month employees for working through construction, high heat and humidity, and numerous other challenges to be ready for the school year for the coming year. A many thanks to the extended school year staff for all of their efforts on behalf of our students. Much appreciation to the Bruton Township Education Foundation for putting together information bags that will be distributed to families during kindergarten orientation next week. Thank you to our teachers, Christina Bedini, Julie Olson, and Lauren Lang, who will be on hand to answer parent questions during kindergarten orientation. To our Wall of Fame students in June, kindergarten, Victoria Gibson and Kendall Luciano. In first grade, Paxton Papa and Nathan Schneidkraut. And in third grade, Antonia Ragucci and Jonathan Hunt. And those are our commendations. Thank you. And that brings us to open session number one. The first public comment period will be limited to agenda, agenda items only. The second public comment period will be open to any topic. Please be mindful that public comment periods are available to enable the public to give comments and feedback to the board. Personal matters and day-to-day -day operations are not appropriate subjects for board meetings. These can always be most effectively resolved with the appropriate staff members or other students according to the chain of command concept. Questions may be directed to the appropriate school personnel or board through email. Please state your name and address for the record. All comments are limited to five minutes. Would anyone from the public wish to address the board on the agenda items? Yes. Mark Pascarella, 12 Dogwood Lane. I have two questions. The first one, with regards to the meeting, the workshop you're having on August 30th regarding best practices for school safety, is there any money in the budget to allocate or set aside? So if there's something there that seems like readily you'd like to implement, you're able to do that? Ms. Pasquale, this training is more for the police than it is for the school. Oh, okay. Um, you know, they want to have all of the officers be even more, more familiar with our campus and the surrounding areas. And in addition, we just want to talk about our own practices that are required by the state for our security drills to ensure that what we're doing, um, you know, is is obviously as uh, as prudent and expeditious as we can be in the event that we had a school emergency. So it's really not about additional training or funding. Okay. It's more for us to um, spend some time going over what those best practices might be and how we can continue to implement. Now, does this school have an officer on premise full time or not? No, not at this point. Okay. If, would that be, if that's a recommendation from the police, I know it's more the police, but if they recommend that, is that something you would readily would look at? So, as a part of one of the motions that the board just approved, we are entering into what we hope will be um, an agreement with the Bruton Township Police to have a class three officer in our building. And then my next question is regarding the roof. If you could elaborate a little bit, a little bit more information on that, uh, with regards to because it seems like they've delivered a whole, almost more material than they had originally here. And were they not aware of like issues underneath the old roof to well, prepare for that? Basically, on, no, basically in a nutshell, the way the architect we, we do uh, infrared uh, readings of the roof, they do core samples. What happened was when they started pulling the roof off here, they realized that 30 years ago or so when they added the building and when they doctored up the roof, they had all different levels that they couldn't have anticipated. So all the deliveries that were here were for the original design of the roof, which they anticipated having a pitch to it for all the drains. When they tore it off, they realized the total deck was flat, but they had multiple levels. And now it requires taper insulation to go towards all the drains and to correct all the hills that were up there. So it was, it was sort of working over the years, but once they pulled the deck off, they realized they had plywood on top of foam and, and just a mess. 
And that so, was nowhere in any of the records of like how no, previous. Not at all. When they when they married the, when they married the two the, the old and the new, they had to build it up and they, they sort of made it work to go towards the drain, but it didn't work real well. Um, and the materials that are here, they're going to have to pull off site, so new materials have to come in. So that insulation that you see under wraps is really the old insulation. The new one has tapers from, you know, taper go from four inches to nine inches. So it all tapers towards the drain. So they delivered insulation that they have to actually take away. They have to take away. Okay. okay. And do they, when do they anticipate having finishing this? The last schedule that I received today, um, they should have the majority of it all wrapped up right before the start of school. We were hoping to have this done two weeks ago so that we had a little bit of breathing room. But uh, there'll, there'll be some work, but they'll work around the school day. Now, is there any possibilities of any any other surprises that they may find, or did they find everything they They pretty much yeah. found everything when they tore off half to 50% of the roof that covers the whole area over the classroom. They pretty much anticipate the rest of it's going to be the same way. Like as bad or better? Probably, probably as bad. So they and so that is, that's included in that that's override cost that's, that's there? Right. Now, if they don't find it, you get a refund? You get an adjustment on it? Not well, they still put. They still designed the roof with all that insulation down there. So, so they had to taper all the drains around there with this new roofing system. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to address the board on uh, agenda items only at this time? Okay. Not. We'll move on to the second report starting with the education foundation. Okay. Uh, the education foundation's annual fundraiser is. September 30th, uh, the theme is Denim and Diamonds. Um, their tickets will be on sale this Friday, and they're looking for donations for the Tricky Tray and Silent Auction. Um, the Four Kids planning is underway, and it's hoping to start on October 3rd, would be the first day of the Four Kids classes. Um, and they're making welcome bags in conjunction with the HSA for the incoming kindergarten orientation. Um, and Meetings will begin again next month. Keep an eye out. Thank you. And Holman School Association. So the whole Holman School Association did not meet in August, but their next meeting is September 13th. It's the first meeting of the year. Uh, we encourage everybody to go. It will be right here in this room at 17th. Yeah, thank you. What was the date? Mm -hmm. 13th. And Morris County School Boards Association. Yes, I have two updates on upcoming meeting dates. The uh, first one of the new school year will be September 28th, which is a Wednesday. They do not have an agenda posted yet, but for the November 3rd meeting, which is Thursday, they list the topic will be focused on school security. So early FYI. And the New Jersey School Boards Association of Charlie. Meetings of that will be soldered. Council Committee. Nothing to report. And not to late. No so update. And Educational Services Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, we met last Wednesday, August 10th. Uh, uh, routine business of <laughs> uh, exciting to report. And we have a great team. We have not met over the summer, but I think our first meeting is the 9th, on Friday, the 4th. Us to our agenda items. The first mm -hmm. item is on finance motions 1 through 14. And the motion, please. I'll move. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. I'll second. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Did the provider um, the report get out the next day? We'll go to the next meeting in July and August. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Discussion? And if not, any questions on the adoption of finance motions 1 through 14 to the roll call? Brandon. Yes. Mrs. Cabana? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Turin? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Lavar? Yes. Mrs. Brian? Yes. The next items on the agenda are personal motions, one through seventeen. Any motion, please? I'll move. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lavar? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Mr. Lavar? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes.
Thank you. The next items on the agenda are program motions one through five. May the motion please. I move. Is there a second? A second. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? If not, any questions on the actual program motions one through five? This is an all favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no? Any abstentions? That brings us policies for first reading. Can I make one comment before this? Because sure. the one policy is misnumbered. Sure. The, um, just making sure uh, I printed it, but I want to make sure this copy. It should be 5119, the third policy for the first reading. Oh, yeah, it should be. Did it change on the agenda? Okay, so. I, and maybe, I think it changed. Maybe the area was made, yeah. but it's just not. Uh, so the policy met and discuss these policies. For all these policies, except 5126, are new options. So basically what happened, there's no changes, but from time to time we look at the policies, and even if there are no changes, we read about them to show that we have looked at them, reviewed them at a certain time and such. Policy 5126 has a minor change. What we did is revised it to match the sample policy from New Jersey School Boards by
hits upon everything that we're interested in and, and working towards as we go forward. A couple of sample questions. They have questions that are broken out for community members, for, for students, for students of different grade levels. So I just pulled some sample questions for grades three through five. And these are, these are great questions that I feel will confident will do uh, we'll have a lot of good responses to, but just questions for students like, is my school, my school is kept clean, I like my school building, I feel safe around the outside of my school, my teachers notice if I have trouble learning something, my parents ask if I've gotten my homework done, adults who work in my school treat students with respect, etc. So uh, I think you'll find if you take a chance to look at these questions, well, let's see. That there really are a lot of good questions, and a lot of the heavy lifting I feel has been done for us because this is a resource that a lot of time and resources has been put into creating, and it's here for us to use. Uh, so, send them the I'd be happy to send the website to you. Yeah. Yeah, so, this, this is something that um, in a DOE broadcast was sent out to schools today, and it's being sponsored by Rutgers University. I guess Rutgers piloted it ultimately, so it's a pilot program the coming year and they're asking if schools would be interested in participating. So you know we received the broadcast today, we looked into it and uh, you know, it's, it's obviously something that we're exploring. So, so this just came out today. Just came out. This is all we good. just received the, the DOE broadcast today. Okay. So and how does this implement? So I don't want to be uh, sit here and speak as the expert on yeah. it, but um, I feel like for a third or fifth grader, I would envision that at some point during the day, maybe the teacher would just put the questions in front of them, unless they're all using computers for everything. I would leave that up to the administration, yeah. honestly. I, I really don't know. You know, community and members, we want, obviously. We, we, are, we have already put it on the radar. Um, so, is it all structured data? In a, I mean, I can see it's a yes or no sometimes, or is, it, is there an opportunity for non-structured data for uh, well, so, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> they, 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 so, they have, there's a lot there. They <laughs> haven't <laughs> disseminated that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're just saying, like, these are the fields, these are potential questions they could ask. So the, the state is piloting it for the right So anyway, I'll send the website to Barry to send them all of you and encourage you to visit. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, is there another old business to come before the board? Yes, I think we can revisit all this. Yes, we could. Well, I sent them all to the board, mm -hmm. so the board should have the documents in the board. Uh, if you don't, I'm happy to email it to you again, or you just check in your drive and share it all. Sent all these four. And I, I sent it over. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Just, so just go to the one that's shared with you, and you'll notice that there was a head. So I know I missed last meeting, but I've seen board goals, I mean, at this point, are we starting with board goals, are we comfortable with those? Um, I mean, I read through them, um, gone through what we have to review, but what is the sense that we, I know we evaluated the work on the first one, but is everybody okay with those? Do you want to read Or should we read through those? No, so you want me to read, want me to read through the, the uh, board goals? And, yeah. Uh, or satisfactory. Can I have the right ones here? The one, the revision one has to be the first one they read, right? Correct. Okay, correct. So the, the revision is obviously the one that's in there. Okay. So the board goals first is evaluate the district's low range facility plan and safe, safety and security of infrastructure systems to determine district needs and financial impact. Okay. So reasonable for discussion. Yeah. Yeah. The next is explore and plan for a district three to five year strategic planning process that includes multiple stakeholders. Sounds 
could you know, successfully negotiate with the Grant Lakes Board of Education a successor agreement to the district's and receiving contract by June 30th, 2023. Okay. And finally, participate in board training with the New Jersey School Boards Association during the school year. Um, I'm, not, I'm the first one. Yes. Um, evaluating the board that we should have a goal that is achievable by the end of the year rather than just determining financial impact, but perhaps like coming up with a plan to achieve the, um, the necessary. The necessary. Yeah. yeah, according to add, you know, so it's. it's yeah, that might be part of an action plan because we, yeah. we would have, like, once we get involved in the involved and evaluating those needs, who knows how long it's going to. Yeah, that might be out of our control to actually achieve it during the year. And, and it could be, honestly, but we do want to evaluate something that continues. So if it doesn't have to be a one year old goal. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to put a timeline on something when we don't know what we're putting the timeline on. I mean, the goal is to evaluate. I guess I was thinking more, um, I know that we're coming up with some major facility needs, and we're going to need to um, make a decision about what we're going to try to achieve. Whether it be through budgeting or referendum or something, and that should happen sooner or later. So it's just trying to help us get to a point where we're making able to make that decision. Um, but I'm not sure. I understand that. Yeah, we may have to It might be unrealistic depending on you know how long it takes us to evaluate our needs, and, and then once we evaluate the needs, you know, we'll them. but but as a part of you know your action plan for that, you could have said that you know within six months you uh, as a part of that you want to be able to have your evaluation complete based on those different plans right. and then you start to get into the crux of what comes next so there are a number of different sources that we have help from the architect we have a long-range facility plan so we sit down with a lot of different information timelines I mean, we want to target a date for a referendum a lot of stuff has to be done within a certain time frame year so your, your goals are really the broad brush and the action plans are both nuts and bolts. Once we start you know, meeting, those things can change. Um, we look at finances, we look at facilities. Is it doable? Do you do, do financing locally or do you bond for some of it? So all that comes out in the, you know, as you start flushing out the plan. Do you, uh, John, and if you don't know offhand, that's okay. Do you anticipate the opportunity to reload our capital reserve account? On an ongoing basis, we do that each year. We, we yeah. evaluate what we've budgeted, what we've spent, uh, making use of a number of grant funds in place of local so we can build that back up. So I have been able to do what I'm anticipating this year uh, through this audit. We'll be able to put some more funds in there. Okay. Yes, that's, and again, when you do a referendum, you have local funds, which are the capital reserve funds. So that's part of your local. So when the public sees it, they see how much you're, you're poning up and, and how much you're going to bond over the Yes, to answer your question, yes. Once that we get the results of the audit, do you anticipate uh, finance committee meetings or some of that can be discussed? Yeah, sure. Finance, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You know, so I think facilities and finance will be driving that goal. And, and we'll be calling the architect into it as well at various meetings to help us evaluate the uh, infrastructure and think come up with pricing and approach for pricing. So I think the goal is to do the evaluation, see what comes out of that, and then we can put together the action plan and have timeline on it. Prioritization. Okay. Cost. Okay. So I was trying to figure out if there was a way that rather than just evaluate, there's another. Another. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that isn't there. So we're trying to be more specific. No, actually, it's just looking for another. Bird, you can say evaluate and develop a plan, but I think the yeah, goal of this, this goal is to develop, develop a plan. It. I think okay. it's the intent of it. Okay. So, we want to have the district goals. Yeah. 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 The first one is to enhance the social emotional learning experiences for students and staff by evaluating current SEL practices and developing recommendations or changes as may be warranted. Sense of community. And number three, 
provide for the continuous academic progression for all students in assessment. Remediate and communicate and identify learning gaps using the student data. Association had a school safety uh, summit earlier in June, and there was really a lot of great information. Speakers included um, folks from nonprofits who are who are involved in social emotional well-being. Uh, other uh, speakers were psychologists and law enforcement, and they had some suggestions for board of education. Again. Many of this, I, I think, there is already things that we're doing, but probably good just to, uh, to, to reiterate. So here were some suggestions for the Board of Education. Uh, all this, by the way, really came in light of the tragedy in Texas, and then obviously uh, previous things. But anyway, this is, this is what they said. For Boards of Education, it is important to keep in mind the social impact of every decision on the community. and. The Board of Education has an important role as a liaison for information between the community and administration, again, everything that we're doing. Show empathy toward the evolving role and responsibility of all staff. So we all see the cartoons online about you know staff members going to school and doing a lot, having to do a lot more than just teach. Our Board of Education should be aware of balancing academic contact content and rigor with caring for and instilling character. Again, character has been a huge uh, emphasis here at RBS, at least the years I've been here. Social, emotional, learning, and character development is essential for academic success and doesn't take away from rigor. Board of Education has a crucial role in communicating that we are in a new era with needed emphasis on SEL and character development, recognizing importance of time for team development and staff coming together. Board of Ed members should always consider how actions are fostering community and a caring culture and should make intentional decisions with that awareness. And th that, that's really it uh, as far as the highlights. So again, all things that we're doing but that I feel are important for us to keep in mind as we potentially adopt these goals this evening and work towards what we want to achieve over the next 12 months. Some, so. some of that could be very useful for the national plan. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks. So, um, that's the only other thing that I want to do. So, to that point, I think in our last district goal is utilizing student data to mediate and communicate things on academics. We have something around utilizing data on the SEL. Well. That that's a good yeah I don't I don't know if it's it's obviously district goal number one um, I would leave that to the administration to work out that would be achieved by plan right right yeah right yeah that's right yeah that's right yeah that's right yeah that's Thank you. 
document that you're receiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, we have any motion, please. I'll motion. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Okay. If not, um, is this going to be roll call? Do we have all the papers? Do we have all the papers? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed say no. Any abstentions? Okay, there's the order board action after that. I think we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of your summer. What's left of it?